Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Joe DiSabatino, and I'm uh, honored to have paintings of mine here on uh, exhibit at the Circle Center uh, across the street from the Mayor's Spiritual Center. And uh, I'm just going to be talking a bit about my, uh, about my paintings, some of the thinking or some of the things I was trying to do with the paintings. So uh, this will be a little tour of my artwork, all right? So thanks for watching. So uh, this painting is an acrylic on canvas. And as you can see, uh, the title is I Am Form, Formless. And uh, what I've been thinking about is Baba's uh, at the, uh, in his final years would often say, I am not this body, I'm not this body, directing us, I think, internally to his formless state. So that, that um, intrigued me as a painter. Uh, uh, how, can, how can I possibly paint uh, Baba's as formlessness and also his form at the same time, simultaneously? Uh, so, and that's what I've uh, attempted to do in this painting and a couple other similar ones. So, the idea here is that, um, that to break down the distinction in a conventional portrait, there's the foreground with the, with the individual's uh, uh, figure, and then there's usually a background. They're in a room or there's some colored background, but that, that's uh, duality. There's um, foreground, background, and I wanted to convey a sense of Baba's oneness. Everything is one, so it's beyond duality. So how to convey that in a painting, uh, this was an attempt to, that the whole painting is Baba. So the, his form is, is emerging from this background, this color field of violets and greens and blues and oranges, but it's also receding. So he's coming in and out of this um, formlessness, the, the color field of creation, which is also Baba. So, uh, and I just made it explicit here by saying, I am form, formless, all right? And again, with the idea he's, he's coming out and receding into his formlessness at the same time. So that, that's what I was attempting to do. And I was, uh, I've been inspired by discussions with Lin Ott over the years. Kind of, if you look at some of his later uh, paintings, I think he was um, struggling with that same uh, idea of, of uh, putting Baba in an, in an internal space where, where the whole painting, all the colors, and this, and, and is also Baba in his formless aspect, while also having his, his figure or his face in the, in the painting. Smaller paintings, it'll be, it'll be better. Okay, anytime. Okay, so here's another painting of Baba, uh, and I'm uh, working that same idea that he is um, form and formless. Maybe his figure is a little more distinct than in this painting, but um, there's a sense that he's rising out of this field of color, which to me would be the, the field of creation and his form emerges from that. And uh, this was, and there's sort of a distorted perspective where his, um, he's, it's like a, uh, a vertical uh, perspective where his, uh, actually his face is probably uh, smaller, but it, would, it kind of distorts the sense of space there where he's disappearing into the, into the violet field of color. And you know, there's very intense uh, penetrating gaze of Baba I would think he's looking right directly into our soul, uh, but then uh, just this, just this wonderful f splash of and joy of 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 color, and uh, the f uh, fiery. This is this painting has a lot of fiery energy, and I think that kind of uh, is reflected in Baba's face. You know, this his fiery aspect when he was particularly in the in the 1920s. Um, okay. All right, so um, here's another painting where, again, I'm working with the idea of it's, um, the whole painting is Baba. It's not just him in, in the form. Uh, the surrounding uh, colors, field, 
or also Baba in his formless state. So this one is called Springtide of Creation. It's acrylic, 30 by 30. Um, and again, Baba in the, in the 1920s with that uh, kind of uh, daze expression on his face. Uh, he's coming down from his um, seventh plane. And um, so the colors I use, if you notice, for his uh, skin tones are also mirrored in the oranges, skin colored oranges, flesh colors uh, surrounding him. But again, it's spring tide of creation, so there's the greens that suggest spring. Uh, another, uh, the avatar comes, it's the spring tide of creation. So it's this explosion of new life and, and brief, mirrored in the idea of this explosion of color. Okay? And uh, again, with Baba's very intense, deep stare, uh, into the world. He's like looking into the world, uh, into his creation uh, as he's getting uh, balanced again uh, as he comes down to the physical plane. Oh, so again, the, the, this, the color field surrounding Baba is, is him, is Baba in his, the suggestion is Baba in his infinite state, in his formless state. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. All right, so this is one of my uh, favorite paintings, and it's uh, titled Begin the Begin, and it's 24 by 20 acrylic on canvas. I just wanted to uh, try to capture this feel and the spirit of Baba's favorite Western song that he had played seven time, times at his interment in uh, 1969. Uh, so down by the shore, an orchestra is playing. There they are. Uh, and even the palms seem to be swaying. Uh, I made the ocean pink. When I think of Baba's love, I think it's pink, all right? So the ocean of love is pink, and, and the, the pink ocean music waves are also coming out of the two saxophones. There's the, the, um, 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 the uh, what's that, what's that oh. instrument? I can't think of the name of the instrument that <laughs> these three uh, um, performers are playing. But I, but I just wanted to capture like there's a, uh, a, um, a flow, an energy to it that captures a sense of longing for the beloved. And then in the song, what happens is the person initially is singing and he feels a sense of uh, loss, a sense of uh, longing for the union with the beloved. And then in the last, the last um, verse, the last refrain, he actually is experiencing it again. It's happening now in the moment. It's not in the past. It's now, it's in the present. And so I wanted to, you know, capture that feeling. And there's the couple, the, the, the beloved dancing with the beloved there. Um, yeah, so um, a lot of people will say, oh, I like the colors of a painting. And, and I think that's good. I, I think I have a, an innate good sense of color. But what's, what's really important and, and I think it takes some training and art appreciation to notice it as the composition of the painting. Like, like I had to make choices, and, and how do I arrange this? Uh, how, how is the eye, the viewer's eye, led through a painting? You know, so there's a lot of conscious decisions. How, where do I place the figures? You know, and I have this uh, sand colored. One, I know I want to suggest it's at night, but I didn't want it to be a real dark painting. So the you know the violet which uh, colors would suggest night, but this would suggest uh, a light on the sand, maybe uh, the moonlight shining on it. So again, and everything's the eye moves this way through uh, through the painting, and then uh, kind of up and out and back and around. So composition is is uh, how does how does the artist uh, move? Um, influence your eye as it moves through the painting. How do they place, how does the artist place the figures or the objects or the, even the arrangement of colors? So, so it's not just about colors. A composition is kind of the underlying structure or architecture of a painting. Uh, that's what I always look for first. I don't even look at color first. I always look at what's the composition that the artist uh, has arranged here and how, is, how does my eye move through the painting? Like uh, uh, Picasso was not a colorist. Picasso didn't really pay much attention to color. All his paintings are about uh, composition and, and his imagination with uh, distorting uh, figures. But he was he he uh, minimized the importance of color in his paintings. So, um, 
All right, so uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite paintings I did. I think I, uh, I just got inspired and just the uh, inspiration came through. So begin the begin, uh, Baba's favorite song. Are All right, here's a, a pair of paintings I'd like to talk about. I've done a whole series of paintings, and each one's different of the samadhi. And um, I try to do them rather not literally, but uh, to capture maybe the, the feeling. I lived in India for five years. Just the feeling of being at the samadhi at certain times of day, uh, sunrise, sunset, midday. And um, <clears throat> so this one is called uh, Samadhi Sunrise. and I wanted to just capture the, my internal feeling of, of being at the sat samadhi early in the morning for sunrise. The, the light is, is, the sunlight is emerging and kind of uh, pushing aside the night here. Um, here and usually, you know, here's the sun, and, and actually in reality the sun would be behind the samadhi, but I put the sun intentionally here in front of the samadhi to suggest that Baba is the sun. He's, he's the sun that's so. Um, um, yeah, so, and, and there's, a, there's a nice, in terms of composition, there's a nice vertical movement here and also horizontal. So the eye kind of kind of goes like there's a, a, a suggestion of energy moving uh, in that direction. Um, and, um, you know, I play with colors like the sky is blue, so I didn't make the sky blue. I made it green, and the earth is green, you know, so I, I made this, the sky uh, in the upper region here, green, and I put the blue down here. Uh, and um, again, just it's an abstract painting um, with a, a, a suggestion of the samadhi, but I, again, I wanted to capture just the feeling, the energy, the feeling of, of sunrise at the samadhi as I was experiencing it. All right, so uh, light, and, and, and the, the painting's kind of split in half, kind of light and dark, you know, also. Kind of, and these these kind of like electrical energy, you know, flashes of lightning almost coming off. So it's very um, something <laughs> very energetic and powerful is happening here. I wanted to convey. All right, um, and then little. So it's mostly um, um, greens and, and yellow predominate, and then a little hint. This is a suggestion of uh, red, the orange and red, the warm colors. So. Uh, Working with uh, complementary colors, green and red are complementary colors, blue and orange are complementary colors, uh, violet and yellow, so three sets of complementary colors I was working with there. Yeah, and this one, um, uh, I also do abstract paintings. This one is called Taking Refuge in Living Presence. All right, again, it's uh, this painting in an internal state, I suppose, a meditative state. Uh, it's acrylic on canvas, 28 by 22. Uh, just how do you paint the, the experience of presence uh, internally? Uh, there's so, I don't know, it's different for everybody. For me, there's the, uh, the pinkish, orange, uh, the swirl of energy, um, the, um, <coughs> the suggestion of, that there's different layers, there are different, uh, layers of energy or different uh, layers happening internally that you move through in a in, in meditative state. So taking refuge, and, and refuge being this, this is a safe place to be, where uh, taking refuge from the, from the craziness of the outer world, you know, and, and blue, is, blue has a nice, blue uh, has a nice calming effect on us. So, and so does the, these uh, pale oranges. Uh, so, and it's a bit like a, you know, there's movement, like an inner weather pattern, I suppose, I was thinking there. So, yeah. I recently uh, did a series of eight pastels at Baba, and each one was is 20 inches by 16 inches. And uh, I, li I, I love pastels because it kind of give you a kind of a dreamy, soft, um, um, gentle uh, quality to the to the image, and um, in each one of them, I put a, a uh, concentric circles of light to suggest the the image of the perfect masters. There's 
there's the um, in God Speaks, there's the um, concentric circles of color uh, to suggest the image for the perfect master. So this is, uh, this is Baba as a suggestion he's the perfect one. Um, <clears throat> I intentionally offset the, um, the frame the, uh, rather than having right angles. They're, everything's kind of off center off a bit. And that's again to suggest that um, Baba, Baba has come to upset our world and our world view in a way is to break down the right angles of our usual duality experience. So uh, there's a slight uh, offset of frame that he's in, done intentionally. Um, again, the, the Baba's in a, just a soft color field. Um, and like the previous uh, paintings I talked about, he's, he's like, he's, um, uh, the color field is also Baba, and this is Baba, the, the, the image for the perfect master. And I use complementary colors, uh, intentionally yellow and violet, green and red. Uh, and his, uh, his coat and his face are, are hues, various hues of violets and blues. Okay. Um, and there's a swirl, I wanted to suggest also a, a swirl of energy uh, with the lines that I use. So, um, yeah. Um, the, there's a, a glass covering, so there might be some glare from, uh, in, in the video from this. All right, so here's um, a view of three more of the pastels that are hanging in the show. And um, <clears throat> I'll talk about each one individual briefly. Okay. This pastel uh, is called The House of the Lord is Within. Um, so Bob is um, looking out a, a window, uh, gazing out into a window, and there's light coming in, and there's light coming out of his of him, and so there's a whole uh, ambiance of, of white light around him, and I just kept it, kept the color simple, blue-violet uh, with a complementary yellow, and again, the concentric circles of the symbol for the perfect master, or there could be the sun, and so that's Baba. Um, so the house of the Lord is within, so there's a, um, an internal sense that he's inside, Baba's inside some kind of a, 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 a structure, a building, but that the, there's, uh, there's windows, it's like it's windows opening up to, to infinite space, okay? Um, yeah, and there's, a, and also there's like swirls of uh, the violet, swirls of white, swirls of, of uh, energy. Um, to suggest there's a flow, to me, like a flow of divine love, just moving, moving around. Um, so there's that one. Uh, all right, this one uh, was predominantly uh, yellow and oranges and reds, warmer colors. It's called Darshan. That's Baba giving Darshan. It may have been the, the East-West gathering. And um, again, it's pastel on board, 20 inches by 16 inches. And uh, yeah, I just, I have this flow of, Baba's uh, love energy moving out from his gesture. And um, this is a very, just a soft, gentle interior sense of he's in it. He's in um, a uh, <coughs> tent of some kind. Uh, and the light's coming in, the light's coming out from him. But there's, the, there's a vertical suggestion, but also a circular energy, flow of, of energy. And uh, it's, Kind of his his hand is sort of I guess the the focal point of the painting, and um, the love energy is coming out of his hand. And okay, that would be more the focal point of this. Okay. The veil is called. The title is called "Love Awaits Behind the Veil." Again, twenty inches by sixteen inches. Uh, I just wanted to give a suggestion of an internal sense of Baba. He's, he's inside a, a pandel or, or a tent structure, but that kind of opens up to, to space, you know, and, and um, just a flow of, of light and energy moving through Baba. He's sitting there totally composed, um, and 
It's an internal space. Love always is behind the veil, so it's behind our own veil. So our own veils of ignorance is where Baba resides. So also the suggestion of uh, these are veils, our own veils of ignorance, and Baba's there or emerging out from behind veils. Okay. Um, yeah, and again with the offset uh, frame, uh, rather than 90 degree angle, things going at, at uh, uh, odd angles. I think that suggests that you know Baba upsets our world, our perspective of the world shifts. You know, uh, duality is, is 90 degrees angles. You know, right angles, and, and the internal spaces things start to start to shift, and, and, and all kinds of uh, uh, odd angles appear. So that that's part of the reason I I, I did that. Same thing over the, over in, in those paintings. All right, love awaits behind the veil. So uh, these are some of the pastels, I, and I really enjoyed doing these. They were they were a lot of fun. I love working with pastels. You work with your. F <coughs> All right, this painting is um, uh, called "Tenderly." It's the title of the f uh, famous song from the '30s. And I've done, I do paintings sometimes of uh, jazz um, and musical instruments. And the way I paint it is to suggest uh, jazz. It's free form. It's everything. Um, um, jazz distorts. Uh, regular predictable musical patterns so you know um, I did that here with distorting the figures the, 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 the size of the of the heads of these two uh, trumpet players and just simplifying um, the form simplifying the, the face of the of the of the female singer but again it's, it's about um, arranging colors but also composition here uh, there's a this repeating red patterns on both sides, the, the lines, the pink, the blue sky, the night sky. Uh, and uh, the, way, the way the colors and the way that these geometric forms are arranged to me needs to suggest the jazz. Okay, everything is, is there's a, a pattern, but it's an unpredictable pattern and it's outside our usual ways of, of perceiving uh, the world are perceiving in, in a more linear fashion, so it's non, you know, it's, it's non-linear. It's more intuitive, and um, pink guitar with a green hole. Every, you know, the colors of uh, breaking down our expectations of of the way objects in the world are or look, and um, but to do it in a way where the, the the geometric forms and the colors of these forms all harmonize. Okay, that was the, that was the trick here, and uh, I like this painting too. It's got a, it definitely conveys to me a sense of, uh, of the song and, and the, the atmosphere of, of a, a jazz performance, right? Good. Okay. All right, so this is another one of my uh, large paintings. It's 48 inches by 36 inches, it's acrylic on canvas, and it's called uh, Heralds of Dawn. And I, I worked on this over, oh, probably two years, and it kept changing and changing and changing until I um, was satisfied with this. And there's a sense of, there's the beach path, and I was thinking of the, the path at the center, uh, at the bottom, um, using those um, wine-colored, um, 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 Beach, um, uh, the, the uh, what would you call that? The, the fronds and the and the at the beach and the path, and then it just opens up to this in, to this space. Uh, there's the sun suggest the sun coming up, and there's uh, diaphanous angels. They're semi-transparent, welcoming the arrival of the sun and the flow of pink. And then there's that um, that white. Uh, they look like columns. Or is it a building or is it clouds? And I made it intentionally um, uh, vague that way. It could be anything. Um, it could be ocean waves. It could be some inner uh, um, Greek temple, perhaps. But uh, so it's it's um, it's a uh, to me it's just the the arrival of dawn and being a very special event and welcome being welcomed by these uh, two angelic figures.
All right, this painting is called The Pearl Divers. And uh, I started working on it. I was in Bali for a couple months uh, a number of years ago. And uh, um, everyone, in, everyone in Bali, particularly the, the main city of Ubud, is an artist. It's really an artistic environment. And uh, um, I've been out scuba diving. And uh, so I uh, got inspired to do this. And it's, I guess, three mermaids, or I call it pearl divers. Um, with the suggestion of, you know, the pearl being the the, um, the, the divine self, and um, uh, I did a lot of splatter with this to suggest being underneath water, you know, the the bubbles, um, and created a a frame here uh, within the frame to uh, just to suggest water and coral. Um, and I just kept it, I, I tried my best to create a, a sense of being underwater. And these three uh, mermaids, uh, all in various uh, uh, positions. Uh, so again, uh, the composition is important. This one's, you know, the, the two diagonals with a, with a vertical figure. Um, she's either going up and one's going down and one's crisscrossing up hor uh, vert uh, the horizontal across the canvas. And, uh, and then I, I added the sense that there's another sense of how to do that, give a sense of underwater. When you're on, underwater, your hair would go up. And so um, these are um, mythical figures, the, the, what, the white and, and blue hair. Okay. Yeah. All right, and this little painting, it's uh, 11 inches by 14 inches. It's called Beach Path, and it's, it's the, um, the beach path at, this, at the Meher Spiritual Center. Uh, leads to the, um, you're on the other side of the gate, and you're walking towards the beach. And um, um, it's not orange there, but I wanted to create a sense of um, lights and um, um, Orange has, I think orange has a certain uh, mystical quality to it, so um, I exaggerated. There were some orange um, fronds there on the right, and I just exaggerated it. And also um, orange and blue are complementary colors, there's the blue of the sky. Um, yeah, and, and this, the light, the main light is right there as you're, as you're, uh, suggest you're walking in, and the, the violet, pinkish violet of the path there. and. Um, Oh, there's the bench many of us are familiar with. So the eye, the, the viewer's eye, just walks in uh, to the beach.